We've selected this site to create a little bit of a pool, not least of all because there's been the, the bed has already been disturbed here, and we've got all this uh, this rock armouring in that's been put in um, to shore up the bank for the farmer, and a drain has been put in here, which discharges about that, that much up above the water level. The other reason for selecting the site is there's obviously suitable material here. There's some big stones that are, are dotted around the bank and we can use those to create some, um, a single cheek or a, or, a, or a flam or a berm, whatever you want to call it, at the, at the head of the pool to get enough acceleration into the pool to keep it um, sediment free. It's roughly on the outside of a sweeping bend so we'll, we'll remove some of the material on the outside of the bend here and we'll build it up on the inside around, as I say, a little uh, large rock revetment and we'll try and get some energy into this area here and make this into a little holding pool. this material off here slightly. Get that bit. So it is just a little uh little uh, sallow uh, whip, just plucked off a, a little live tree, just poked in between the rocks and that will just grow out and provide some bushy cover over the pool. When you look at the stage between when the, the, the little alevins emerge from the gravel to the first birthday, even in pretty good habitat, you're looking at a 95% mortality rate. Um, you know, and obviously that's the strategy of most fish, you know, the shotgun strategy of lay a lot of eggs and have a lot of offspring and hope that a few survive. But there's a massive amount of potential there for increasing uh, survival rates. And what we've seen with this technique on a number of rivers 
is that um, particularly ones uh, that haven't got a lot of bank side cover, so the, the ones that are, you see that are very open and grazed and, and wide and shallow with, with poached banks from the livestock, where techniques like that are used and, and the livestock are excluded, the numbers of juvenile fish absolutely rock it. And we discovered it by accident on a little river in Staffordshire where we were doing this sort of thing for bank erosion, but on the back of that, just anecdotally, anglers coming back were saying, oh, we're catching 30 or 40 fish from this section now when we go. Whereas our electric fishing results were showing that there'd only been 20 in there before you know, we'd actually done the work. And then subsequent electric fishing showed that the, the numbers had been boosted up to sort of 100, 120 for the same length of river, uh, which is about 100 metres. And the, the big increase in those numbers was entirely fueled by the, the sort of 0 plus and 1 plus juvenile fish. So. We're great believers in the, in having low bushy cover like this in 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 the water, and there's a number. Of, there's lots of different ways of achieving it. The, 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 there's the brushwood um, things like this, which in this case are also helping to pinch the channel. And during high water, we'll we'll probably scour out this section here and and hopefully move some of the fines uh, out of the section and maintain some of the depth in there where it's where the uh, diggers excavated a, a pool at the at the head. But further down, we'll see some examples of what we call tree kickers, um, which are just small trees and bushes anchored to uh, to um, think stumps like this down at, at the water's edge, which provide instant cover for for juvenile fish, um, and have the same you know the same effect. This is one of the sites that the Loss Agency have come through with their their grading bucket to uh, reduce fines, to lower the level, and to bring a more uh, gravel-rich substrate to the surface. Um, these sort of riffles, you know, they make fantastic uh, juvenile habitat, but the, the key areas for spawning are often at the front face, where the water should drive through the gravels. And if you look down here, there's, there's still so much sediment in the, in, the, uh, in the bed here, and the gravels are what we call poorly sorted. They're all sizes and shapes. So, yeah, the gravel is, is really poorly sorted. It's, it's heavily infiltrated with, with sediment and fines. And you can see there's some, there's some ideal gravel here for spawning in terms of size, between 20 and 50 mil, but there's a lot of fines. What we will be doing is using some woody debris to sort and blow some of this, this finer material out of the gravel. But the other thing about the debris is it sorts the gravels into sizes and, and zones so that fish can actually home in, depending on how big they are, onto a section of substrate that suits them. So that's what a little device like this will do. And all it is, is a section of log, like so, where I've cut a little notch in it, put two little spacers on it, it's upside down at the moment, and we're going to drill through here and here, and we're going to pe peg it into the river. I'm up. The idea of the spacers is just to ensure that the water flows underneath the woody debris. Of course, it's incredibly buoyant at the moment. It's all right when I've got a pin through it. Oh, I've got those the wrong way round. Now, at the moment, oh, that's okay. What you might be able to do is a little underwater shot here and you might be able to see the fines gradually getting blown away because what happens is the water hits the underside of the trunk and goes down and as the velocities increase and the, and the end river gets more energy this will drive the flow down here and it will gradually blow the sediment away and as the flow gets stronger in a spate it will sort the gravels here. This will be a deeper pot, actually it will be a great place for a fish to lie in too pre-spawning so it'll be deeper here and it'll deposit the gravels into various sizes in this sort of area. And this will be a phenomenally good spot for spawning because it's smooth laminar flow on the up ramp of gravel. The eggs won't fly all over the place. And then when the eggs hatch and disperse, they'll have all this wonderful habitat to populate. So it should be a good one.